Greetings and welcome to uh, the Mad River Valley Chamber of Commerce latest edition of our Community Conversations. Um, these programs have been remote in the past and it's great to have uh, a live um, event here for the first time in a while. I hope you guys are all comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah you're not all freaked out or anything. <laughs> no, it really is good to, have, good to be back. Um, this Community Conversation is sponsored by our good friends at Bourne's Energy as well as the other members of the Mad River Valley Chamber of Commerce. Um, and today we're here in Waitsfield at the Yes Tomorrow Design and Build School uh, to talk about alternative heating options and how we can help reduce our community's overall carbon footprint and reducing heating costs for our neighbors and residents and second homeowners here in the valley. Um, and we want to focus on what residents and uh, second homeowners and folks can do in the more immediate uh, time frame as opposed to long term um, and to be greener and save money and support local businesses and do good for the environment. Um, yes, tomorrow where we are here, the Design Build School is kind of an apropos place to have this conversation uh, because of their commitment to energy efficiency. Uh, and sustainable building. So uh, we'd like to thank our folks at Yes Tomorrow for uh, having us here. If you want to find out more about uh, the Yes Tomorrow Design and Build School, uh, go to yestomorrow.org. Uh, and they are a nonprofit, so a uh, really great organization uh, and great opportunity to check things out. Maybe we can take some classes here uh, in the future, right? So our guests today, we have Brad Long from Efficiency Vermont. Nice to see you, Brad. Thank you, Eric. Um, we also have uh, Jack... Um, Blackstone. Blackstone. I'm yeah. sorry. I was I'm gonna, sorry. Jack yeah. Blackstone from uh, Jack's um, Heat Pumps or Heating and Plumbing. Is heating and Air Conditioning. Heating and Air Conditioning. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, I like the name. Yep. How did you develop the name, Jack? Uh, you know, it was tough. <laughs> I had to hire a study group. Yeah, and we also have yeah, focus groups, <laughs> oh, yeah, right? Yeah, a focus group. Yeah. yeah, and we also have Jim Curry from uh, Bourne's Energy. Welcome, Jim. Thanks Thank so you. much for, for joining us. Um, so let's meet our panelists. Brad, tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Sure. Thanks. Uh, so I am Brad Long. I work for Efficiency Vermont, and I am a, what they call a community engagement manager. Um, so what I do specifically is I try to uh, help ensure that the services that Efficiency Vermont offers, whether they're technical services or incentives, uh, are reaching community members. Um, oftentimes I work in what we call energy burdened communities. So that's where income levels and uh, cost of energy for a home uh, are, are a little heavy uh, for those individuals, um, but that's not always the case. Uh, this year I'm working in the Mad River Valley as part of our initiative, we call it a targeted community program, and the idea here is to help Valley residents um, understand their energy use and understand what options they have available to them to reduce their energy or improve their comfort, and understand what types of financing that might be available, incentives that might be available, understand the partnerships we have in the industry, uh, and essentially, my job is to help leverage our services and help reach people that may not have been in contact with us previously. It's a real uh, feet on the street kind of a position. Um, you know, a lot of our, our, our organization is uh, engineers and, um, and, and account managers. My, my account is a community. Uh, so this year I'm working a little bit in Barry City and in the Mad River Valley. Well, cool. Well, thanks a lot. I'm yeah. glad you're here today. Thank you. Jim from Bourne's Energy. Yeah. You guys have been around a little while. We've been around a long time. We're yeah. going into our 75th year. Uh, still family-owned business. You were um, not there in the beginning. I was not there. Um, but there's, uh, yeah, it's it's family-owned business. Um, you know, the, the good thing about our company is, is we can make decisions. We have folks um, locally that are making those decisions and um, can get answers for customers. So, I, you know, I, I feel like we have a... Um, a foot up when it comes to that because a lot of our, our larger competition um, doesn't have that flexibility and, and we're able to um, help folks out and um, we try to do the right thing. We're um, embedded in, the, in renewable fuels. We've been doing uh, biofuels now for about 15 years and uh, pellets real close right behind that wood pellet. So we're, uh, we recognize that it's it's something that needs to happen, is happening, and um, you know we're we're in it, and we've been doing it, and, and we understand it, and it's all good stuff. Well, thanks yeah. so much for being here, Jim. Yeah, this is great. Us. Jack, yes, welcome aboard. Thank you. Glad you came down for this. Thank you. Glad um, to be here. 
So your company is Jack's Heat Pumps? Jack's Heating and Air Conditioning. Heating and Air Conditioning. I'm so and, sorry. And For the second time. But that's all right because um, we focus on heat pumps. Yep. So since 2014, we uh, shifted our focus primarily to the mini split and the centrally ducted heat pump or the centrally ducted heat pump is uh, also referred to as a hybrid system. Mm -hmm. And we typically pair that with either a propane or an oil system. Um, and... Uh, since we started focusing on heat pumps, the business has uh, steadily grown. Mm -hmm. And Bourne's being a fa another family-owned company, um, we got into a conversation last summer, and we've uh, pretty much partnered with Bourne's. Mm -hmm. uh, Bourne's is now um, our parent company, and we're a division of Bourne's Energy now. So, uh, so we strictly focus on the heat pump end of it, mm -hmm. and um, that goes hand in hand with the other alternative energies that Bourne's offers. That's cool. Yep. It's nice and they kept you on. Yeah. They, they, <laughs> well, they have to with the name and everything, right? <laughs> well, you know, they, they allow me to show up every day. <laughs> no, that's great. So, um, you know, it's interesting. You know, we're here to talk about how, what our local residents and, and second homeowners can do and business, local businesses can do to save money, use less energy, all these things. I was kind of thinking about this a little bit, Jim. I was like, you know, it seems like you guys are encouraging people to use less of the product that you're selling. Yeah, so... Is, yeah. That, is that a sustainable business model? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I think that our mission is is to make sure that people have the highest efficient equipment that they can get. And if it means that they're burning a little less fuel, that's okay. Because, again, we want to make sure we're doing the right thing. And our goal is, is that we're going to get more and more of, you know, folks out in your communities here that want to hop on board with us and, and do that. So I think that it's um, a mission that we're, we feel like we're headed in the right direction with, mm -hmm. and uh, we're not the traditional propane or heating oil company um, that, you know, most people would, would know. So you guys were involved in lots of different things, obviously working with Jack and the heat pump idea, and, uh, and you have a partnership with Vermont Wood Pellets as well? We do. So Vermont Wood Pellets is a fantastic company located down in, North Clarendon, Vermont, um, they produce a 100% softwood uh, pellet, wood pellet, um, and we um, currently service the majority of the state um, for bulk wood pellets, and then we also sell bagged wood pellets as well. Um, Vermont wood pellet, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. It's, you know, these guys are supporting the, um, the loggers, the truckers, the people that work there at the mill, and then we're we're peddling the product for them and putting it out there, and um, it's a it's a good story. It's it's mm -hmm. um, again trying to do the right thing and and um, giving people a really really quality product, um, you know, for 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 their heating systems. So, and what's nice about that is that, that when people are spending money on energy, I think it's one of the few products that right here in the local economy. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I think there's lots of forests in Vermont, right? A couple. Um, yeah. And it's interesting what what they use. Like what That was one of the things that I found interesting, the research that I've done, is maybe you can speak to it a little bit about what, what kind of wood are they using? Yeah, so it's 100% softwood. It's pine. It's uh, wood that sometimes would have been thrown away. It's um, your traditional wood burner would be you know always saying we need hardwood 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 and it's the exact opposite those stoves um, and heating systems burn cleaner um, more efficient you know um, if we're going bag for bag against the hardwood pellet um, you're going to burn less when you're using the Vermont wood pellet so it's um, you know it's it's been a win for everybody I mean I, for the consumer as well as as us putting out the best quality product that we can while supporting Vermonters. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I was thinking about with this is that with the, when you're talking about burning wood, and you know, emissions are always an issue, and that's what people are always talking about. These, in fact, clean, burn a lot cleaner. This isn't one of these clean coal things, is it? No, no, no. It's the real deal. Okay. It's, they're, Why is that? It is... It's just the makeup of everything that they're doing. There's no binders. There's nothing added to any of this stuff. It's 100% wood and uh, softwood um, compressed into these tiny little pellets. And um, they they just burn super, super clean and um, it give you probably the highest BTU um, output that I've seen for a wood pellet. Uh, 
So are most of them being used in, because I know you, you just mentioned, I, I kind of imagine them in wood stoves. Yeah. But you said there's actual more fur, like furnaces, is that yeah, the right so word? we have furnaces, boilers, we have, you know, industrial systems, schools um, that are all burning these, these wood pellets. And, you know, some of it is based on um, a conscious effort to um, use a renewable fuel. Mm -hmm. um, some of it is, um, you know, mandated um, by their communities or whatever, but, um, I, you know, again, I go back to people, people like heating with wood, but they like even better um, heating with wood and not making a mess of our environment. I also like heating with wood when my kids are moving it. Yeah. And yeah. now that they've moved away, I'm liking eating with wood a lot less. Yeah, yeah, but you know, there, we have bulk systems out there. We have, you know, people with silos. We have people with, uh, you know, three to five ton uh, bins in the basements of their homes. Um, we blow them in with a big uh, pneumatic truck, just like what you would be uh, seeing for an oil or a propane delivery truck mm -hmm. showing up at your house. They deliver them right into your basement, and uh, away we go. You know, you're heating your house with wood. So, Brad, does Efficiency Vermont has a lot of incentives and things like that. Do do they do things for the wood pellets as well as some of the other things? Yeah, but to echo a lot of what Jim is saying, we, we do support uh, the wood pellet systems. Uh, it is a sustainable local fuel, so it's keeping everything within our economy. Uh, and um, we do. We offer a, a up to $6,000 incentive for a, a wood pellet furnace or boiler. Um, so if a home or a business is looking at uh, retrofitting or upgrading their, their current fossil fuel system, that is something that Efficiency Vermont can offer some technical assistance on, uh, as well as referral to qualified contractors and, uh, like I say, up to a $6,000 incentive. Is that also for new construction as well? It would be for new construction uh, and, and for retrofitting. Mm -hmm. uh, we also offer up to $200 for a, a smaller, more of a traditional wood stove, but a pellet, a pellet version of a wood stove. So if, if folks are interested in that, that's something we can help um, we can help with financially. That's interesting. So it's seen, you know we have a really good kind of diverse group of folks here representing different you know different organizations and uh, and it seems like it's not there's not just one answer to everything to you know to solve our our energy issues. You know the heat pump thing has been super popular in oh, the does. last few years, right? Yeah. It can does. you tell us a little background about like how how this has kind of come about and, and a little bit maybe kind of how they work? Well, I'll tell you, um, we were installing these heat pumps in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. and primarily for air conditioning is what people were using them for. And then when we hit that uh, crunch in, you know, the 2008-2009 era where heating fuel went to almost $5 a gallon, um, all of these things were installed out there, and people started saying, hey, I wonder if it really does work for heat, and lo and behold, it did. Um, and they just began to slowly gain in popularity. Mm -hmm. Over the years, um, the corporations, the companies that manufacture these, put more and more engineering into them. They are, were getting more capacity at colder temperatures with the units. And so one of the big questions I get when I go into a home is, what is a heat pump? You know, what, what does it do? Mm -hmm. And virtually every home out there already has a heat pump in it. And I was uh, talking to Brad about this before uh, we got together here today. So the, the, the perfect analogy is your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So the, a heat pump uses the process of refrigeration to take heat from one place and put it in another place. So your refrigerator is a heat pump in that it takes the, the heat that exists in that frozen turkey in the freezer and puts it in the kitchen through the back and the top of the refrigerator. There's a coil inside mm -hmm. there. That's why the top and the back are warm. So the, the heat pumps that we use today, outdoor air temperature below zero, we're able to take that heat, compress it, and condense it, all right? Mm -hmm. Move it into the house through the refrigerant, all right? And then thus warm the air in the house with that. So, so. The, conversely in the summer? Conversely in the summer, it's a wonderful air conditioning system. So... Um, an, another good analogy. Which no one in Vermont used to have. No. Well, <laughs> how many homes, um, you know, were built? You know, how many multi-million dollar homes have been built in Vermont without central air? Well, my multi-million dollar home that was <laughs> built in 1803 um, certainly doesn't have air sure. conditioning. Sure, 
and uh, and it's a you know it is a great way to add air conditioning to your home and I would say that the vast majority of our customers we put enough capacity in their home to adequately cool it and then it will the capacity that we've installed will heat the home in the shoulder season mm-hmm. now the machines are designed and will operate well below zero if we install enough equipment in your home we can heat the home year round with heat with mm-hmm. heat pumps what we find though is if we don't try to do that and we pair with another fuel source wood pellets are a great other source mm-hmm. um, propane's another good source um, a lot of customers uh, outside the Mad River Valley a lot of uh, customers uh, are on uh, natural gas right. you know and so we put enough equipment in to heat the home say down to about 20 degrees outdoor air temperature and then they switch mm-hmm. to their other heating source at that point so for so if you have an existing so you can add this to an existing system like in my old house you know where I have oil if you do do you have a forced air system or do you have a forced air air, forced air so what we would add to your system we we would be able to convert you to what's called a hybrid system Mm -hmm. right and we would tie it right into your oil furnace and um, add a heat pump to that so you'd have central air in the summer and then you would have a heat pump that was effective down to 20 or 25 degrees would it use the existing duct system it would yes we could do that so they 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 manufacture the most popular here in Vermont are the uh, ductless, or a lot of people refer to them as a mini split, and that's where that's where it's going up like the back outside of the house. Exactly, and mm-hmm. that what you see going up the back of the house is the refrigerant piping and wiring, and that's enclosed in a vinyl enclosure. Most everybody's seen them. Looks like a rain gutter downspout mm-hmm. on the back of the house. Yeah, that's cool. So, and efficiency Vermont, what's what it what do they do with? with these kinds of things. I imagine that there's yeah. incentives for that. Yeah, there certainly are a lot of incentives. For the split units that, that Jack was mentioning there, there's a, up, to, up to $650 incentive. For a ducted system for your house, is about a $2,200 incentive. Mm-hmm. If you want to get a little more high tech and go with a, uh, a water to air system, I think we're offering up to $6,500. Or air to water, sorry. Air to water, yeah, air to water. yeah up to $6,500. Um, so efficiency Vermont does support the heat pumps. Um, it, it's a it's a technology that we think is beneficial for the environment. Helps reduce fossil fuel load, mm-hmm. uh, and it's a, a cleaner way to, to heat or cool a home. Um, I think, as you mentioned, there having a backup heating system for the coldest days is something that efficiency Vermont continues to recommend. Um, you know, not because the heat pumps can't keep up necessarily; they can. But as it gets colder outside, it's, it's harder efficient. for them to extract the heat out of the air. So it, it, it uses a little bit more power to do that. Um, so I could still hep wood around, and that will keep me warm as well as absolutely. a secondary. Yeah, absolutely. One of the questions I've had is, where does efficiency get all this money that you guys throw around to give to everybody? Sure. Uh, so every, you just rob banks? No, like, <laughs> no, no. Every rate payer in the state, so everybody who's got an electric bill. Oh, so I'm paying for this. You're paying for this. I'm right. paying for this. Unless you're off grid, we're all paying for this. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the legislature uh, asked for this about 20 years ago that uh, the state form an energy efficiency utility. We're the only uh, pure energy efficiency utility in the nation right now. Uh, we were the first, and uh, we've been doing this about 20 years. And essentially, what happens is every ratepayer pays a very small amount of their total electric bill. Uh, it comes to us as an energy efficiency charge, and uh, that's where we get our funding to use uh, to, to create these programs and services for everybody. So. From what I understand, you said it was the one of the first, the first in the country mm-hmm. yeah. to have. Um, it's become kind of a leader. Like a lot of other states have followed suit with this, right? It's certainly becoming a, a bit more important. I, I think as the as the nation as a whole begins to look at uh, certain certain environmental impacts that we're mm-hmm. seeing and um, where we're getting our fuel sources from, uh, I think people are considering efficiency a little bit more. But uh, there's a comfort piece to this as well. Um, Typically, when somebody puts in a higher tech heating system or heating and cooling system, they experience more comfort. Uh, it's almost the same as you install new LED lighting inside your, your home or your business. The lighting quality improves, mm-hmm. and you have more versatility with that lighting. You might be able to dim it. You might be able to put it on a motion sensor. You might be able to put it on a light sensor that determines outdoor light is, is increasing, so we can dim the lights inside automatically. So when we see people wanting higher levels of technology, it often comes with efficiency, which is really a nice a nice combination. 
So you guys are also dealing with you know, more basic things like um, like just better insulation and yeah right? yeah. So efficiency Vermont, one, you know, one of the positions that we often take is is um, we try to offer people a, a, a comprehensive look at their homes or their buildings. So I'm going to call it a structure from here on out. Um, and one of the things that we hear a lot about is weatherization, uh, and we often hear weatherization heat pumps kind of in the same bag. You know, we've heard this a lot. Well, I'm thinking about weatherizing, or I'm thinking about putting heat pumps in. Uh, and I, what I encourage people to do is um, start with us and have a conversation with Efficiency Vermont, because what we've learned in 20 plus years is that most people struggle with prioritizing what to do. Mm -hmm. And then they struggle with understanding what incentive dollars might be available. And then the, the, the third level is where do I get the money? How do I finance this? How do I make this happen? Because if we're looking at weatherizing a home, we know that the average cost to weatherize a home in the state is about $8,500. Where does a homeowner get $8,500? Um, so we have financing uh, partnerships with uh, credit unions throughout the state that help mm -hmm. people finance their projects. And oftentimes we can work with them to help create a, a cash flow positive financing situation. Uh, and, and, and that makes it really easy. So if, you, if you're going to reduce the cost of heating by $50 a month and you can structure your, your financing so that you're only paying $50 a month, you don't notice anything until it's all paid off. When it's paid off, you've got a savings. Mm -hmm. um, so Efficiency Vermont, um, one of the things that we're offering this year, particularly in the matter of Valley. I hope this thing's not going to fall on no, us, right? No, this is <laughs> more than this, I'm sure. Um, but one of the ways that we're trying to help people, particularly in the matter of Valley, is we're offering a, a virtual home energy visit, mm -hmm. and we're offering business walkthroughs. Uh, and the idea is that in a business situation, we'll come to your business, and we'll walk through the structure with you, and we'll help you identify areas where you can make efficiency improvements or we'll have discussions with you about areas where you're having challenges you know and we'll do the same thing for a home in a virtual format uh and and that gives people a place to start and we'll leave people with a, a list of prioritizations based on their needs and their wants and their desires you know sometimes we walk into a home and somebody says well this area here is so cold that the wall gets almost frosty in the wintertime. time. 1803 farmhouse, you might have experiences like this. Uh -huh. uh, or, they get, or, or, or they get freezing pipes in a certain area, or the yeah. floor is ice cold. So we try to educate the them. The cat's water bowl literally froze. Okay, all right. So I, I, I knew a fellow <laughs> Like who, chipping, I had to chip the... I'm uh, not making this no, up. No, I, I, I knew a fellow. He was an old farm family up on the, uh, on the common road, and he said when he was a kid, he remembers the cat's water bowl freezing. And they put on more clothes to go to bed than they did to get up in the day and, 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 and go about their day. So when we see challenges like that, and we have to understand Vermont has the second oldest housing stock in the nation. We still have Fieldstone Foundation. I'm part of the problem. Well, you're not part of the problem. <laughs> You've inherited a technology that's, that's gone. It, 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 it's, it's missing at this point. So part of Efficiency Vermont's role is to help people understand this is where you're starting. This is what it may take to get to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, if comfort is your goal... Uh, if efficiency is your goal, we can help have those conversations and help direct people to incentives, financing resources, and trade partners that can help do that work. Yeah, well, i got to tell you, I mean, I, I worked with Efficiency Vermont and this is about 10 years ago. And for me, what was great about it is they, exactly what you said, is they prioritize things. Because it is, the whole thing's just overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And yeah. it's like, they're like, okay, do this first, do yeah. this second. And, you know, you're going to get your most savings here. Yeah. And they really did stress the comfort thing. Like, you know, yeah, it's about saving money, but, you know, it's, it's lifestyle. And, you know, when I, when I first bought my house, the first winter in my house, 12 quart of wood. And that's a lot of wood for my kids to carry. <laughs> <laughs> Which is down from 1803. 1803, a house like yours is about 24 to 30, maybe up to 40, depending upon the it's size. It's amazing now. It's the difference yeah. now. And it's, it really, it's, it's remarkable. Did in you the weatherize the house? We weatherized yeah. everything. And uh, we got into this new, uh, we had the new, there's a new furnace. Yep. And, you know, it was, yep. and we replaced every window and door. But, you know, you should do that every hundred years or so, I think. I mean, right? I, you know, the, to your point, though, that, that that's a big piece of it, that people often think of the furnace or the boiler sitting yeah. in the basement, close the door, out of sight, out of, sight, out out of, of mind. mind. But, you know, it, the only time it becomes relevant is, is when it's broken. Yeah. And, and so, you know, these kind of programs are things to think about and things to think about being proactive and, um, you know, getting ahead of it before it be does become an expensive problem. And, mm -hmm. you know, just to kind of dovetail on what you were talking about with, with the credit unions, they understand all of this. They understand Vermonters. They understand the economy. And they understand the value of these folks 
um, upgrading their homes to more efficient mm-hmm. equipment, um, and they're they're there to help, and they yeah. do a great job. And it increases the value of your home. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, I just I know, it, yeah, it, and it's more comfortable. Uh, I'm saving. I'm spending less on, on on heating it for sure. It's cooler than it used to be as well. Um, and I know that you know when I go to sell that thing one of these days that. Yeah. You know, it's it's not the the leaky old farmhouse that was nice and quaint to look at, um, but it actually works. Sure. We're going to talk heat pumps. Well, well, one of the <laughs> things one of the things that that I notice or that that we come across frequently mm-hmm. is we go into that old eighteen hundreds farmhouse and um, the customer just wants to add a heat pump to save on their energy bills. If there hasn't been any insulation improvements, if it's still got the old windows and doors in it. All we're going to do is take that dollar that they're spending on whatever it is mm-hmm. now and move it to their electric bill. Jack, that's a great we, example we, of prioritization. Right yeah, there. we have to we, we have to button the house up first because mm-hmm. you can put the most efficient heating appliance in the world in. You, you asked yeah, us to was turn our I, phone I, off. Yeah, yeah, and I was the one that told you. Yeah, I, I think you mentioned something. Yeah, I think he right? said something about turning our phones off, didn't he? I, it? I, I yeah. did that, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's all right. So, so if we put... If, if we put the most efficient heat pump that mm-hmm. money can buy in a house and the house leaks like a sieve, it's just going to run all the time. Mm-hmm. And the customer is going to be unhappy. They're going to have a high energy bill. And ultimately, um, no one wins. So let's focus on, let's introduce them to the programs that Efficiency Vermont has. And what is it the, uh, I know that there are contractors that do home energy audits. Are those building performance experts? Is that what they are. So, yeah, the, the Building Performance Institute, the BPI certified contractors, okay. um, those are the ones that are generally enrolled in, the, in our Home Performance with Energy Star program. Mm-hmm. And those are the ones that help um, offer a scope of work for people to weatherize a home. They can sure. often weatherize a home, and then they can also connect those people with incentives and the financing that are available. Sure, sure. Um, but, you know, one of the things I do want to say real quick is that when we hear about all this work on homes, we, we do think about dollars. And I just want to pause real quick. One of the things that Efficiency Vermont can offer people is low or no cost options um, to help people understand this. And that includes renters. We're also offering this virtual energy walkthrough for renters as well. Uh, Because if you're renting an apartment and you're paying the electric bill or the fuel bill, there might be some things that you could do in that apartment that could help you be more comfortable and save you some energy. But, you know, we often talk to people a little bit about, like we mentioned the furnace or the boiler. You know, we don't think about until it breaks. One of the things that we advocate for is that, if, look, if you've got an 8-year-old oil boiler and it's got a, a, a lifespan of 15 years and you haven't maintained it in two or three years, we're going to encourage people to maintain that oil boiler. But we might also talk to them about insulating hot water pipes or sealing ductwork in the, in the basement or the crawl space because if you've got a duct of hot air and it's uninsulated and it's leaky, you're losing... Yeah, that you're was lo- literally the first thing they did in my house. You're losing energy that, that way. So. We like to have conversations and, and find people on their level. Mm-hmm. And if somebody says, look, I bought this house, I've got $200,000 to renovate, I want to do the whole thing, that's a different kind of conversation than, I just bought this house, we're getting by, but we just realized that we spent $1,200 on propane last year, there's got to be a better way, and we were cold. Um, as an example, I have a 989 square foot raised ranch house. Uh, I used 905 gallons of propane a couple of years ago. I weatherized it. I used uh, 595, so about a 30% reduction in propane weatherizing the house. And to your point, in the summertime when it's hot out, my house is not nearly as hot as it used to be. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I found a lot of comfort, and I found fuel savings. I had to do it through the financing. It took me about three years to figure out all the pieces, mm-hmm. all the parts, what it was going to take to do it. Uh, it's a complicated process, and I... If it hadn't been working at Efficiency Vermont, understanding what resources were available, I probably would have walked away from the idea. But it's, it's helpful to have a third party offer objective advice. We can't buy anything. We can't mm-hmm. sell anything. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're there to really help people dice some of this up and figure out where to start. Doing well by doing good. Trying. Right? Trying. No, and I think that's, you know, to the point, you know, I, I was kind of joking about how you were saying, I'm like, you yeah, know, we're trying to get you guys to use less energy. Isn't that kind of a counterintuitive thing? And mm-hmm. you're saying, well, no, no, so put a heat pump in if, you know, you haven't done other stuff first. Sure. Um, you know, I think there's, I don't know if it's, whether there's just an appreciation for the fact that um, looking at customers with long-term value oh, sure. in terms of not just 
doing the the expedient thing Absolutely. and selling the more whatever that you're you're selling them. Uh, and I, you know, it's it, it's interesting to see how how companies diversify. When you sure. were heating and ventilation business, sure. and sure. and the heat pump has become yeah, it's a our, predominant it's our, thing. Our you know, you source, guys yeah. were. You know, it, it was interesting. You know, the fuel oil companies. You know, as an aside, like my, my grandfather down in New Jersey had an ice and coal company, mm-hmm. um, you know, delivering ice and coal, you know, in the in the, in the teens and twenties, and it, they became a heating oil company over over time. And it's really interesting now to see how you know, Bourne's, which was a pretty traditional local heating oil business, has morphed into a real leader in green technology and and. and Right and absolutely, it's, yeah. I mean, it's an evolution that mm-hmm. you know. If you don't keep moving, you get left behind. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. I think it's 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 been good. Yeah. yeah well, one of the things I was I was surprised to see that Bourne's had you, you know you get into the biodiesel. We haven't really talked about the biodiesel yeah. end of it at all. Can you touch on that a little bit? Because one of the things I was surprised is I knew it from. I didn't realize that you guys did it for vehicles. So we do it for vehicles. Um, there's a percent, or up, de- depending on supply and cost and everything, uh, we blend all of our oil um, that goes into your home. So if you're getting oil from Bourne's Energy, there's there's a percentage of um, bio in there as well. So basically, the um, the process is um, we have all these restaurants in our communities. Um, and they have French fries, and they have fried food, and things like that. Don't I know it? And <laughs> and that um, that needs to go someplace when it's when it's used up. So it goes off and gets refined down and um, into a pure fuel. And so you guys uh, go around and collect it. We don't collect it. So there that's are, another. Yeah, that's somebody else that's business. doing that. We go to the um, uh, the terminal and pick it up in the refined state. It's. Uh, B99, um, so, you know, nearly 100% pure bio. What does um, the B stand for? Bio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we bring it back to our plant in Morrisville, and we have a blending plant there. We have a 12,000-gallon um, tank inside a heated building um, because bio does need to be kept warm. And um, we have a blending system, so we're able to blend any blend that a customer wants to have in their homes or in their vehicles, um, and bring it to them in, in our in our traditional delivery trucks. The the biodiesel uh, most um, uh, manufacturers will not warranty it over a B20, so a 20% blend. Mm-hmm. Um, but if somebody wants to um, do something and they sign a waiver and they want to they want to have a higher blend work we'll we'll do what the what the customer needs and mm-hmm. and um you know we have different partnerships with um, utilities with construction companies with um other folks that are burning yeah, i think a even sugar bush uses biodiesel they in do. their in their cats right yep yep, yep. we uh we have it pulled up with the cat up into where the tanks have to go oh they're customer yours yeah oh yeah. that's cool yeah so it's um yeah, they're doing the right thing here in the valley with that. It's mm-hmm. great. The, the other thing that I'd just like to add about the biofuels is, you know, we're talking about heat pumps. We're talking about alternative systems and things like that. And often people are, are thinking about dollar signs. And for that, that customer that's out there that just can't get over the hump with, with the money piece of it, you know, for some really small changes to their system, their existing oil systems, mm-hmm. We can we can put a, a higher blend of bio in. We have people that are burning B B ninety nine in their homes, and you know didn't have to make a big investment into a whole bunch of equipment in their basement. So mm-hmm. there's there's all kinds of alternatives that can be used here with these uh, with these different scenarios. I guess. You know, one of the things I wanted to ask too is you know you were talking about with the, the about the backup having a backup for um, heat pumps. I think that's sure. something. How does it, um, does it matter like in terms of existing, you know, what people have existing? Does it matter? Yeah. I mean, have? like, will, the, will the, does the heat pump technology work with mm-hmm. whatever? Sure. And so we normally encourage folks that, you know, what you have for a current central heating system, mm-hmm. 
whether that be uh, you know a, a boiler system or whatever, let us install the heat pumps, but don't take that out. Keep that. Mm -hmm. All right. Keep it for two reasons. One, as um, you know, Brad was talking about. We the colder it gets outside, mm -hmm. right, the less efficient the heat pump is. Okay. So there's there's what we refer to as a crossover point if we're looking at it from merely a financial standpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the crossover point that we find typically um, with current pricing on electricity and current pricing on fuel oil propane, mm -hmm. the current crossover is about a 20 degrees above air, above zero, is about the crossover point for the financial. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, it just depends on what the customer is after. You know, if the customer is more concerned about their carbon footprint and doing what's right for the environment, or if the customer has invested a lot of money in solar panels on their roof, mm -hmm. so that right. crossover point is a lot lower for the customer that has access to solar energy. Mm -hmm. right. um, so, yet yeah, to answer your question, yes, um, you know the heat pump can pair with any existing heating system. So it's just amazing how everything is so related. You know, mm -hmm. you know what you guys do and what Plums do, and then you know what the state of Vermont is doing with you know we were. We were talking with Emma. Was we were hoping that she was going to be here from uh, from Agency Natural Resources, right? Yep. You want to talk a little bit because we were hoping that she was going to be here today to try to talk about what she what yeah. she does. Well, I, the state is certainly interested in um, keeping as much uh, of the buying power and resources in state as possible. And and when we're looking at uh, a fuel source like local wood, that's employing local truckers, that's employing uh, local people to uh, go get that wood, process it, package it, and get it to a, uh, a, a point of use. Um, that's, that's something that the state is interested in maintaining uh, and, and promoting, uh, simply because it keeps the money in Vermont and it's sustainable. Um, you know, there's a, uh, uh, there, there's, there's a lot that goes into bringing fuel to a house. You know, there's a refinery, there's, uh, there's a, a bulk truck. There's a bulk tank in a house. Uh, there's fuel that goes into that truck to get it to your house. Uh, there's ships that are crossing the ocean. Getting stuck in the Suez Canal. Getting stuck in the Suez Canal. So um, when we look at that, that's one thing to consider. The other thing to consider is market fluctuation. Ransomware. Ransomware. Um, but you know, if you, if you look at uh, if you look at the cost of wood pellets and wood heating uh, over the past, uh, if you go back even ten years, you'll see it's a relatively stable cost. But if we look at the cost of fossil fuel, and we can see this at a gasoline when you go fill up your car. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw it was three dollars and four cents the other day, and I think a couple weeks ago it was two eighty nine. Um, one thing about the wood, and the state will tell you this, is that it's a more consistent cost, uh, and it tends to be a little bit less. So that's something to think about when we're thinking about long term sustainability. One of the things that's attractive is 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 predictable cost. And when we think about some of the volatility we could see in the world with fuel supplies and political tensions, oil and gasoline and, and uh, byproducts of that, like liquid propane, those can fluctuate tremendously. 80% of Vermont is forested. A lot of the wood that's also coming is coming regionally from the Adirondacks, maybe from Maine, and maybe some from New Hampshire. Um, those fluctuations are going to be a lot different and a lot less. Um, so that's something to consider. I think the state would... But certainly echo that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to see. I said that, that you know one of the things that we started off talking about was the fact that you know it's not there's things you can do now. There's things that we can you know that it's not just this overwhelming thing. So I appreciate all of you guys being here to to kind of talk about that. Is there any other last things that anyone wants to mention before we wrap things up? I will say one thing. You know, when we think about heating systems, we're always thinking about the big mechanical pieces, the mm -hmm. boilers and the furnaces. But as, as these guys will certainly know, you've got, and you know too, you've got, you got fan motors, and we've got pumps. And a lot of folks don't realize that a lot of those fan motors and pumps can be made a lot more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I mentioned earlier, simply insulating the hot water pipes in your heating system, is, the payback is less than a year. It's less than one heating season when you do that. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of heat loss in those types of scenarios. Um, so Efficiency Vermont can certainly help direct people to resources uh, and, and help them understand that, hey, can't replace the boiler this year. Plus, it's not at end of life. I'm not going to run out and replace that boiler, but what else could I do? 
you might find that uh, insulating uh, your piping system, uh, insulating your ductwork or sealing up your ductwork, um, maybe adding a smart thermostat, uh, mm -hmm. those are some things that, that might help. Uh, adding window shades and window blinds might help from a cooling and a heating standpoint, from a, a thermal loss standpoint. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we talk about weatherization. I said $8,500 is the average cost. A lot of people might balk at that. Mm -hmm. But we also know that when you're looking at a basement, the top 20% of that basement wall is causing you 80% of, of, of the heating yep. loss. So just weatherizing the top 20% of a basement wall and air sealing the upper surfaces in your home to stop some of that airflow from moving through can offer a dramatic impact. And I'll give another good example, the attic hatch. How many folks have an attic hatch in their sure. house that's nothing more than a quarter inch piece of plywood? And that's a yeah. huge amount of warm air that's going up through that attic and it's leaving the house. And yeah. as that's leaving the house, the house needs to replenish that. We see this, this theory of convection, right? Mm -hmm. And that cold air is coming in right from the uninsulated sill on the basement yeah. and your floor is ice cold. So I encourage people to think that it doesn't have to be a whole new mechanical system. It doesn't have to be a whole weatherization of a home. There are bits and pieces that people can chip away at that can be very, very effective, add comfort, add convenience, and make it a lot a lot more affordable to be in your structure. Sure. That's great. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you guys coming today. Um, I think it's been there's been a lot of really good information. Um, EfficiencyVermont.com. I would say for the Mad River Valley residents, it's EfficiencyVermont.com backslash mad dash river Dash Valley. That's where businesses can sign up for their business energy visit. That's where homeowners can sign up for their uh, virtual home energy visit. That's also where renters can sign up for a virtual uh, home energy visit. And renters are also eligible for some free energy saving products right now, as well as landlords. So that's where I would direct people. It's efficiencyvermont.com backslash mad dash river dash valley. And that's the whole targeted communities. That's the targeted right? community camp. Program. You also see me at the farmers market coming up. We're doing some library days where I'll be doing some open office at the libraries along with some of the local energy coordinators. So if you see us advertising that, come on out and talk to me. I'm happy to talk with anybody about any of their energy needs and concerns and help mm -hmm. provide some resources for people. Well, I will vouch great. for Efficiency Vermont because I've like, like, been there and used them before, so that's yeah. great. Right. And Jim from Bourne's Energy, thanks so much. There's information about all the stuff that we talked about at Bourne'sEnergy.com. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And Jack. Heat pump, the interesting topic. Really yep. appreciate you coming. Great. It's definitely a hot topic of conversation. It was interesting. Uh, about a week ago, as we were planning this whole thing, there I think I sent it to you. There was a uh, someone put a thing on Front Porch Forum asking about heat pumps and you know yeah. people's experience with it. So um, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. And what's the website? It's jackshvac.com. Excellent. Well, thanks so much. We really appreciate uh, the folks at Yes Tomorrow inviting us here. Um, and we encourage people to come and check out what's going on here. Really is a great organization. Um, it brings a lot to this valley, which is really amazing, uh, more than I ever realized, and how many people actually are drawn to this community because of people coming to Yes Tomorrow and taking classes here and falling in love with this place. So check it out at yestomorrow.org. And um, thanks so much for being here for our, our uh, community conversation, and we'll see you around the valley. Thanks, Eric. Thank, Thank you, Eric. Eric. Yep.